Ladies and gentlemen, this is FRQ number 28 from the 2005 BC exam for AP Calculus. Uh, another Diffy Q uh, seems to be the, the theme of the FRQs this time. Um, pretty standard FRQ, except for the Euler's method. Uh, so I feel like we might be able to handle this thing. Um, it says on the axis provided, sketch a slope curve for the, divin for the given differential equation that passes through the 12 points included. Uh, honestly, this is probably the most laborsome of them. I mean, it's, you know, you just have to add and subtract stuff, which is a pain. But we can handle it. I will switch, since I'm doing it on a white background, I will switch to ketchup. And, uh, it's just, I'll go into, you know, not to sound like I'm cheaping out here, but, um, but I'll go ahead and just draw the, the, um, the slopes here, and I'm pretty sure that uh, that you guys got something pretty similar. Uh, slope fields are really odd to, to, to draw, so we will um, we will go from there. And so then from here, I will go and just use blue, because that, so that's a, a contrasting kind of color. If it looks like it's going to pass through zero comma one, I'm pretty sure this guy is going to go is going to shoot up like that. And I apologize for missing right there but he's going to also shoot up like this as well. And like I said, I'm pretty sure you all got that. Just, uh, you know, the slope fields are a little tedious. The hardest part is just adding and subtracting stuff, which we all know that I am no black belt in, but that's okay. You guys are, so that's good. Um, okay, so solu the solution curve passes through the point 0, 1. It has a local minimum at x equals ln of 3 halves. So what is the y coordinate of this local minimum? Well, what do we know about this? The most important word in part b is the word local minimum. And when I see local min, I'm thinking first derivative except this time, because they already gave us the first derivative. So I'm not going to be deriving anything for this. For b, I'm going to say, well, 2x minus y is my derivative, but what do I know is true about this derivative at the given coordinate? Well. Whenever you have a local min, that means that your derivative has no choice. It has to equal zero. And that is only true if you have two times the natural log of three halves minus y being zero. So from here, it's got to solve for y. So that's pretty simple. So it looks like ln of 9 fourths is equal to y. And I think that's as far as we can go. I think we're good on this guy. So pretty straightforward FRQ so far, uh, until now, uh, because we're doing Euler's method, but in this case, you know, it's one of those rare times in Euler's method where we a we're actually finding, if we read the question here, it says, let f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition, f of 0 being 1. Using Euler's method, starting at x equals 0, of two steps of equal size, approximate f of negative 0 0.4, and then show the work that leads to the answer. So. This is one of those rare situations when we're using Euler's method to move backwards instead of moving forwards. But uh, moving backwards is the same as moving forwards, except you're just moving backwards. So we can uh, we can do that. We can move backwards here. We can moonwalk. We can moonwalk. It's okay. As long as we remember how to find certain aspects of Euler's method, we should be okay. So. The table has made its triumphant return. X and Y and dy dx have made their triumphant return. And this cool thing called new Y. What the heck is new Y? I feel like we've talked about this before, but maybe we forgot. New Y is equal to the slope, uh, M, or dy over dx, the slope at that moment in time, times whatever the delta X was, that change in the X. And then we're going to add the old y to it. So let's talk about the change in x portion. Well, we're using two steps of equal size from 0 to negative 0 0.4. So that tells me we're going to go from 0 to negative 0 0.2 to negative 0 0.4. So it looks like my delta x in these problems is always going to be negative 0 0.2. Now we've got to find out what all the other stuff is. That's going to be a piece of cake, except adding and subtracting and multiplying are kind of hard. But we can handle it. So uh, 0, 1. dy dx is going to be what happens when I plug uh, 0 and 1 into my differential equation. Let me go and write it down again. So it's dy over dx is equal to uh, 2x minus y. 
And I don't think you guys need to see me actually compute this. I mean, we got a negative 1 here for dy dx. The setup for the new y is going to be dy dx, which is negative 1, times uh, delta x, which is going to be negative 0 0.2. And then plus the old y. Old y is going to be 1, so that's plus 1. All of this mumbo jumbo computed gives me 1.2 into here. And then when I plug all this stuff into dy dx, what I get is I get negative 1.42. And then to get the new y again, I'm going to go and go uh, delta uh, dy over dx, uh, 1.42 times negative 0 0.2 plus old y is going to be 1.2. And again, once we get here, I think everything is largely settled. 1.42. Two ends up becoming the answer, and please don't go any further than that. Uh, let me just catch up again. I'm going to catch up. Uh, I'm using catch up already, so let's use catch up. Uh, 1.52 is the final answer. D please don't go further. Don't go. Don't. Don't. This is not your answer. This is not it. We don't want this. No, we don't want that. We want this because f of negative 0.4 will approximately be 1.52. Not here. This is f of negative 0.6. Don't do that, please. All right, let me go ahead and clean up the board, and then I will resume with parts C and D. I apologize, I just made two mistakes. One, we already did C. And two, I don't need to erase the board, because I can just scroll down and go down to D. So let's go and do D now. So I apologize for that little mishap right there. D. Uh, let's find the second derivative. So we're going to go um, d squared y over dx squared. So what is that? Well, d squared y over dx squared, that's going to be 2 minus dy dx. And I can clean that up a little bit. I can plug some stuff in. That's 2 minus, parentheses, 2x minus y. Which is going to be 2 minus 2x plus y. Now it's asking me to determine whether or not the approximation from part c is less than or greater than uh, f of negative 0.4. Explain the reasoning. So remember, Euler's method really is just a summation of a bunch of little mini linear approximations, which means the linear approximation rule will still apply. The reason why they had us taking the second derivative is because under an overestimation, like linear approximation, depends on, Euler, uh, depends on concavity, even in Euler's method. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, well, f of negative 0.4, right? That was approximately 1.52. Well, where does that place me? Well, that this x value is negative, right? This y value is positive. This leads me to think that I, these points here, exist in quadrant 2 of the coordinate plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate what the heck is up with this second derivative in the second quadrant? Well, in quadrant two, x is always negative and y is always positive. So I believe that if I look at this really, really hard, I can say that dy d, uh, d squared y over dx squared is positive for all x and y in quadrant two, which means y is concave up. Therefore, our approximation is under. And I think that will wrap it up for this video. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, keep in touch, and as always, put comments and questions in the comments section, and hopefully we will talk soon. See you later.